بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Respected brothers and sisters, we are here in this place which is known as the Zawiya and the Khanqa of Salahuddin Al-Ayyubi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Salahuddin Al-Ayyubi Rahmatullahi Alayhi is known as the liberator of Masjid Al-Aqsa. He is known as the liberator of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And in 1102, the Christians, crusaders had taken over Masjid Al-Aqsa. After Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had taken it, since then it, we were living in peace. But then the Christian crusaders came and they wanted to take back Jerusalem just like it was at the Byzantine Empire. And they took back Jerusalem and it, uh, they ransacked the place. They killed 60 or 70,000 people, including Muslims. Blood was running down the roads that we are walking on today. That's the way that they took over Jerusalem. Then what happened is um, Muslims were very weak. Muslims were very divided. And uh, it never looked like the Muslims will be able to take Jerusalem. It so happened that in Kurdistan, in Tikrit, in 1137, there was born a person called Salahuddin al-Ayyubi. And his mother says that when I was pregnant, I saw a dream that I had a sword from the swords of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my womb. His mother saw a dream that I had a sword of the swords of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my womb. Whilst he was a child, he moved to Syria. So from Kurdistan, moved to Syria. And he became a hafiz of the Qur'an. He became a hafiz of the Qur'an. Now, his aspiration was to become an alim and a scholar. And his role model was Nuruddin Zingi. We heard his name yesterday when we went to Masjid Al-Khalil, where the, the mihrab it was brought by Salahuddin as a gift that was given by Nuruddin Zingi for Masjid Al-Aqsa here and for Masjid Al-Khalil over there. So Nuruddin Zingi, he was the ruler uh, of Syria at the time from 1146 to 1174. And he saw the potential that uh, Salahuddin al-Ayyubi had. Um, and he had created a very religious and spiritual environment. So at that time, the Fatimids were ruling over Egypt. The Fatimids who were uh, uh, Shia orientated, they were ruling over Egypt. And they were being attacked by the Crusaders. Because they were being attacked by the Crusaders, they sought help from Nuruddin Zingi. Nuruddin Zingi, he sent Salahuddin Ayyubi with his uncle Shirkhu to go and help Adid, who was the person in, uh, in Egypt. So Adid was a Khalifa of the Fatimid e Egyptian Empire. Shirkhu, the uncle of Salahuddin, is sent by Nuruddin Zingi. And as his support, he sends Salahuddin al-Ayyubi with him. Now, Salahuddin wanted to stay. He wanted to become what? He wanted to become an alim. But he said, Asa lakum. Sometimes you want something and you don't get it, but it's better for you. Sometimes you don't want something, but it's not good for you, but it's better for you. So he said, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this from me. So he went to Egypt with Shirkhu, his uncle, and they helped Adid repel the crusaders. And he stayed there, Shirkhu stayed there, Shirkhu became the second in command to Adid. Shirkhu shortly thereafter passed away in 1169. And Salahuddin became number two in Cairo, Egypt, within the Fatimid Caliph. And he was only about 34 at the time. Nuruddin then passed away in Syria. When Nuruddin passed away in Syria, what happened is that the leaders that took over were not as good as Nuruddin Zingi. Unfortunately, they were quite corrupt. They started supporting um, some of the, the crusaders. Some of the celebrations of the crusades were happening as well at that time. So people were not used to this. Nuruddin was a righteous, principal person. So they, help, they sought help from Salahuddin al-Ayyubi. So Salahuddin was in Egypt at the time. This is when he started his expeditions. He grew up in that religious environment. And now he's, he's taken over Egypt. And now he's being called to Syria because Nuruddin Zingi has passed away. So he started fighting Muslims to bring them back on unity against one common enemy. So before this, what was happening that Muslims were fighting Muslims? And that happens today as well. Not only does it happen internationally and when we're watching the news, we say, why is Saudi bombing Yemen? And why is uh, Pakistan like this? And why is uh, this country against this? But we don't look at our own household that brothers don't speak to brothers and sisters don't speak to brothers. We in our own household have the same thing. 
And until we unite as Muslims, and until we love each other like Muslims, and until we care each other for Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help is not going to come. And what Salahuddin decided is that all these factions, we need to unite against one common enemy. And that common enemy was the crusaders that were coming to try and take over the lands of the Muslims. So for 10 years, that's what he did. He just tried to gather all the Muslims in the surrounding areas of Levant, whether it's Syria, whether it's Palestine, whether it was Egypt, get them under one banner. And that's what he did. Reginald de Chatelon was a great enemy of Islam. During the time of Nuruddin Zingi, he was in prison. But when the new leaders came, unfortunately, they let him free. When they let him free, that arch enemy of Islam, he was such an arch enemy of Islam. What did he say? He said, this is after 15 years in prison under Nuruddin, but the new uh, rulers let him out. What did he say? He said, I am going to march upon Makkah and I am going to march upon Medina. And then he said words which, you know, it's uh, very hard to repeat. But he said, I will bring the Kaaba to the ground. I will take the camel herder out of his grave, take back to my palace, and Muslims will have to pay to see him hung. That's what he said about the Prophet ﷺ, Reginald de Chatelon. So when, uh, Nuruddin, when uh, Salahuddin heard this, he said that I myself will kill Reginald de Chatelon. What happened is he dispatched an army under Hussamuddin Lutlu, and uh, Hussam took a navy and defeated Reginald and his army, but Reginald escaped. So that army that he had gathered to go to Makkah Mukarramah and Medina Munawwara, that army was defeated, but Reginald de Chatelon had um, escaped. Four years after this defeat, Reginald attacked a caravan traveling from Egypt to Syria. This time, Salahuddin took an army to fight the Reginald and his army. And this is the famous Battle of Hittin. This was a great battle, and it's known as the Battle of Hittin. The Crusaders strengthened this army and had greater numbers. They had the true cross believed to be Jesus. Uh, Jesus' cross. So they had greater numbers. They, had, uh, they thought that they had Jesus' cross with them. And initially, Salahuddin besieged this port where their, their women and children were. So they left their women and children. What Salahuddin did was besiege the port of uh, where their women and children were. This brought the army towards their women and children to try and free their women and children from Salahuddin. But what Salahuddin had done he had poisoned the wells around the area which led to the place. So all the wells that they were coming towards this place, all the wells were poisoned. Now, Salahuddin's army had its back to the water as well, had its back to the sea, which gave confidence to the crusaders. So when they came, they saw that Salahuddin's army, they got nowhere to run. There's only the sea. And now we've got them trapped. But what they didn't realize that all the water that they were drinking was poisoned. At night, they thought, that there would be respite, but no, because the, there was no water, the wind was blowing on the direction of their camp, and they started choking on that water that they had drank during the day. They started choking. Then Salahuddin did not stop there. So this army was defeated at Hittin. He started taking all the towns and cities that had been captured by crusaders. Turan, Haifa, Arsuf, Beirut, Nablus, all the ports. So no reinforcements could come. So what Salahuddin was very clever. He knew that the, the crusaders would have to bring their reinforcements through sea. So he took over all the ports. So nobody could come through the ports. He killed Reginald de Chatelot during the Battle of Hittin. Somebody once asked him that you are the king of Syria, Egypt, Lebanon, Yemen, but we rarely see you smile. We rarely see you smile. He said, how can I smile when Baytul Maqdis and Masjid Al-Aqsa is still not free? Because that was his greatest aim, that I have to free Baytul Maqdis and I have to free Jerusalem. Then he marched to his main purpose in life, which was the liberation of Jerusalem. He went around Jerusalem and found the ideal place to besiege Jerusalem on the 20th of Rajab. On the 20th of Rajab. And for six days, he pounded the fort. Then uh, the leader and the, the commander, Balian, came out to request terms. Salahuddin said, I had offered you terms. He then said, if you don't accept these terms, then the 5,000 Muslims who are living in Jerusalem, we will kill them. So Salahuddin accepted his terms. Salahuddin agreed the terms and he entered Jerusalem on 27th Rajab. The Prophet wasallam, the most famous date that we have, came to, came to Masjid Al-Aqsa on the 27th of Rajab. Salahuddin, he freed Jerusalem 
and Masjid Yaksa and liberated Jerusalem and Masjid Yaksa also on 27th Rajab. 88 years previously, 77,000 Muslims were butchered. Now, whilst they are entering, Salahuddin and his army is entering, they must have remembered that the children, the mothers, the, the daughters who were violated and killed in such brutal manner and their blood was flowing through the streets. So Salahuddin could have taken revenge, but Salahuddin remembered how Prophet ﷺ entered Makkah to Mukarrama on the time of Fatih Makkah. And the Prophet ﷺ and the companions also must have remembered their own persecution a few years earlier. But the Prophet ﷺ, whilst somebody said, Al-Yawmu Yawm Al-Malhama, that today is the day of retribution, the Prophet ﷺ said to the companion, No, 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 this is not the day of retribution. اليوم يوم المرحمة لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. Today is a day of mercy. They, I will say what my brother Yusuf عليه الصلاة والسلام said that there is no retribution today. Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgives all. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgive you. Stanley Lane Poole, the historian, recounts the compassion of Salahuddin, and he says he only killed one man, and that was Reginald. The Shatana and 200 Templars who tried to fight against his army, so they were killed as well. All women were freed, all the men were freed. And when the Crusaders heard about the defeat, the Pope who was sending all the Crusaders, he died out of grief. He died out of grief. That's how angry he became. Pope Urban II. The new Pope wrote to all the kings, the King of England, the King of France, the King of Germany, wrote to all the kings that we need to take back Jerusalem and we need to take arms and we need to march towards Jerusalem. A great army was gathered from Germany. Frederick brought a million fighters and from, uh, Richard uh, came from England, Philip from France, uh, 600,000 men. And there was a person, there was a very pious person. He saw Hazrat Salahuddin al Ayyubi that he was very concerned. His eyes were full of tears. So he said to him, what's happened? He says that I have heard that another great army is coming across the seas to attack us. And we've been fighting for so long. I don't think we've got the energy to fight this army off. The pious person said, don't worry. You see the tears in your eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has drowned those boats because of your tears. In your tears. And it so happened that a few days later, the message came to Salahuddin al Ayyubi that Frederick and his million army that was coming across the seas, storms had come and they had drowned and the rest of them went back. So this is how Salahuddin had liberated Masjid al-Aqsa. And unfortunately, today we see the condition of Masjid al-Aqsa. It is under occupation. The people of Palestine are under occupation since 1948. And then again, since 1967, they've taken more areas. As I mentioned, there is clear apartheid within this land. And even there are many, many Israelis who are against this type of apartheid. They say that why is it that an Israeli can go from one place to another and it takes them five minutes and another person, they have to go half an hour all the way around. Why? Yeah. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends another Salahuddin al ayyubi May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest of rewards for the efforts that he made. It is only because of Salahuddin al ayyubi rahmatullahi that we at least have this much. We at least have this much. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have this much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to learn our history, to take pride in our history. And like I said, one of the biggest lessons you learn from Salahuddin Ayyubi is unity. Today, we, I, I, I always say this, when we're watching the news on our comfortable sofas, on our leather sofas, we always do commentary that this is what should be happening in Pakistan, and this is what should be happening in Bangladesh, and this is what should be happening in Saudi, and this is what should be happening in Yemen, and this is what should be happening in UAE. Yes, they are leaders, and they should be doing their things. But have we got our own houses in order? There are so many differences within our families. Our families. So many differences. That a brother doesn't speak to a brother, a sister doesn't speak to a sister, a son doesn't speak to a father, a mother doesn't speak to her daughter. And then they're the same ones who are commentating on the leaders uh, who have so much to lose. We don't have anything to lose on the day of judgment when we will see that there is so much there. We will think that we were fighting over this. As a Sheikh Mufti Shafi Sab Rahmatullah once he was uh, reminiscing that when we were small, when we were small, we used to play marbles. We used to play marbles. and when we used to lose the game of marbles, we used to cry over marbles. We used to cry over marbles. And now today, when I think about it at the age of 30, 40, and I think I used to cry over marbles? 
I used to cry over marbles. And then he says that that will be our condition on the day of judgment. That I used to cry over a house and I used to cry over a car or I used to cry over a thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds. Look at this Jannah. And I used to cry over that. It will be equivalent to marbles then. So let us learn this lesson of unity. If there are any difficulties within your families, try and patch up. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unites everyone. Uh, and wherever there are difficulties, Allah removes the difficulties. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.